Hello, I'm ranting my way through life and happy new year! Yay! It's 2019. So, um, I just recently watched a video from another small YouTuber, um, who did this whole, like, 2019 tarot reading thing. I'll link to it down in the description and also at the end of the video, so you, you should definitely go watch it. But anyway, so while I was watching it, I was kind of interested to see, like, um, how true it'll end up being, like, later on in the year, so I'm gonna go back to it and watch it again. But I was also curious to see if maybe I could do my own and see what I come up with. So I have my tarot deck. You see it? It's Witch's Tarot um, by Ellen Dugan? Duggan? I don't know. But yeah. Which is tarot. So this is this is um, the only tarot deck that I have, and I got it because like I was gonna get into magicy stuff, but whatever. That's all. That's a whole other thing. So it has a book, and then it has the cards, and I think they're really pretty. Like you know, the illustrations are really pretty. I like them. But anyway, because it's like a witch's tarot, it's more like magicy based. So I don't know how much the stuff will like apply to me. I don't know. I don't necessarily buy into the whole tarot thing, but it's just kind of interesting to see what comes up and what, how like you interpret it and how later on you might interpret it based on what actually happened. You know what I mean? So it's just kind of cool. It's just neat. In the, the video that I watched from Katie, uh, she did a reading that was like, it was 13 cards, and the first card is kind of like your whole year, and then each card subsequently after that is for each month, you know? So I'm gonna do that also, but just have it be for me. By, for me and by me, and I'm literally just gonna be going based off of what it says in the book. Like, I have no idea what I'm doing. If you, as a, if you're watching this and you're a tarot person and you notice something that I don't, then feel free to let me know down in the comments, because I'm interested. <laughs> so I just got them set up and I just took a picture of the whole thing, so I'll put that up now. <laughs> so anyway, so this first card over here um, is gonna be the full year. Apparently my card for the year is the Seven of Swords. So let's look up in our book what that means. So when the Seven of Swords blows, the Seven of Swords card blows into a reading, it is a nudge to come up with some new schemes and or tactics. It is time to be clever and creative. This card denotes a smart, resourceful person, who one who avoids or evades confrontation. By doing so, he shrewdly takes the wind out of his opponent's sails. Look at things from a new perspective. Come up with a new solution to the same old problems. Think outside the box and you will experience a victory and a breakthrough. Uh, keywords, new schemes, new solutions, thinking outside the box, relying on your street smarts, partial victory, evasion, cunning, foresight. Hmm. Hmm. And interestingly, so it's not, I'm not doing any of the reversed things, because like I said, I barely know what the hell I'm doing with regular tarot, I don't need to add in the reversed stuff, but the keywords for reversed are allowing fear to hold you back, not seizing opportunities, timid behavior. So I feel like maybe this is saying like, I need to take risks and come up with solutions, I don't know. <laughs> maybe the whole year will be just like, try new things. <laughs> try new things, right? Right? Try new things. I don't know. <laughs> so, sure. That's, that's good. Since this is gonna be my first, like, full year having a YouTube channel, that's probably a good, a good card to start with. Sure! Let's continue. <laughs> continue. Okay, so January's card is the Hermit. 
The Hermit card is all about taking purposeful time off, standing alone, and looking within. When this card appears in a reading, it is a sign that you need to take some downtime for yourself and regroup. Now is the time for vision questing, reflecting, intuition, meditation, and self-development. It is time to work your magic solitarily for a while. See, this... This... <laughs> Bandit, are you okay? I saw that. <laughs> My cat just tried to jump up onto the dresser that I have right here, but my computer's right there, so he didn't have room because he's a big boy. <laughs> so yeah, like I said, this this one is kind of a magic-y based thing, so. Uh, trust in yourself and your gut hunches, Take and take some personal time to see where this leads you. Let your magic light the way, no matter what challenges you are facing. Keywords, reflection, meditation, intuition, taking time off from the coven. Solitary work, spending time alone out in nature, gaining enlightenment. Okay. 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 Interesting. So, maybe in January, gotta, like, reflect and regroup. Figure out what the hell I'm doing. That makes sense. That That is... That makes sense. So, February is the Emperor. So this card may symbolize a leader of a family or a magical group, a responsible, balanced person. Just as the Emperor is doing in this card, you should calmly survey your situation and carefully consider your options. This card may stand for your boss at work, no matter what their gender, not just a husband or father. The Emperor card will often appear in a reading when you are up for a promotion at work, about to earn a higher degree in your coven, or even if you are taking a new job with better prospects. If you find yourself standing as the head of the family or coven or the peacemaker or an arbiter, um, arbitrator, it is possible this card may represent your role within the group. It can also symbolize your leadership within a family dynamic or at your place of employment. Okay. Responsible and balanced person. That's for February. I don't... I don't know. I don't know. I guess we gonna find out. <laughs> okay. My birthday's in February, so, I don't know. Maybe I'll, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what that would mean. I'm really good at this, as you can tell. So, mm, March is Eight of Swords. So we've got the Seven of Swords as our main year thing. This is the Eight of Swords. This doesn't look too good. Oof. I don't know. Let's find out. When this card turns up in a reading, it speaks of restriction and of feeling trapped and sad at the moment. However, if the individual would stop overreacting and feeling sorry for themselves and would pull off that emotional blinder, <laughs> they would see a way out. Things are not as bad as they may appear. Happiness is possible, the sun is breaking through, and new opportunities can emerge. This card may also represent a witch who is fearful of ritual or of their own intuition. Think of the classic challenge given to the mo to most blindfolded initiates. It is better to rush upon this blade than to enter the circle with fear in your heart. How do you enter? They have to answer without fear or they are denied entrance into the coven. What can you learn from this card? Look again at the description and symbolism and find your answers. Fear has no place in the craft. Okay, fuck. Restriction. Keywords. Restriction, feeling trapped, overreacting to the situation. Things are not as bad as they seem. Blah, blah, blah. So, I don't know, maybe in, like, March, I'll be, like, I'll have, like, a problem, have to, like, tackle it, and come up with some new solutions to the problem, whatever. <laughs> Swords seem very intense in this. I don't know if that's just this deck, or if it's, like, that's a thing in tarot. See, I know nothing, but... Anyway. April. The world. Neat. Meanings. When this card appears in a reading, it is a sign that spiritual lessons have been mastered. There is a sense of freedom and harmony to be enjoyed. Newly acquired knowledge, strength, and even spiritual understanding will now be put to good use. It may also symbolize successful completion of a project, a personal renaissance, or even strong and healthy spiritual connections between people and our coven members. Keywords. Rebirth. Wholeness. Completion. Joy. Victory and achievement. A journey's successful end. The magic and wonder of the natural world. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. So that's April. 
So maybe the problem that I have in March will have a satisfactory conclusion in April? Maybe? I don't know. Sure. Let's go to May. The Ace of Wands. This is actually one of my favorite cards in this deck. It's really pretty. It's the most potent and pure form of the masculine element of fire. This card shows the creative fire or energy that cannot be contained and, is, and now is bursting forth in bloom. The Ace of Wands helps to reveal the creative path or the career path that you are on. Your hard work is turning, into, turning your ideas into a successful reality. This is an auspicious card if the querent is considering a new job or is up for a promotion at work. The Ace of Wands symbolizes power, new beginnings, a birth, success, a new home, a promotion or a new job, ambition, passion, enthusiasm, and growth. Keywords, creativity, courage, optimism, ambition, career and business, positive starts, a birth, transformation, new home. Your hard work is turning ideas into a successful reality, the element of fire. Okay, 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 okay. So, problems happening, peacefulness, and then new beginnings, right? Because I guess the world is kind of, is considered like the end of the fool's journey or whatever, so maybe it's like this stuff at the beginning is going to be figuring out stuff that is currently bogging me down, and then in May I will have a new beginning. <laughs> or whatever. Sure. June. Five of Cups. This card symbolizes dissatisfaction, being pessimistic, and yearning for something you can never have. <laughs> Out of the five silver cups that are presented in this card, two of them are still full. It is interesting to note that most people only notice that three of the cups have spilled their contents out. Only notice that three of the cups have spilled their contents out. When this card washes up in a reading, it is a warning that boredom, minor disappointment, and moodiness are taking over your life. You are wanting what you cannot have or things that will not be good for you in the long run. You may feel awful at the moment, and things you once delighted in may seem uninteresting to you now, but it's time to stop being melodramatic and to look around yourself carefully. You still have options and opportunities. Tap into the element of water, wash away your doldrums, and find solace and peace. Keywords, dissatisfaction, disappointment, moping, blah blah blah. Okay, alright. Interesting. Okay. 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 There's like a lot of ups and downs in this year. I don't know what's gonna happen. Okay, so that's June. July. The star. <laughs> the star. The star. Okay, meanings. It's a card of hope, inner peace, creativity, and healing. When this beautiful, tranquil card turns up in a reading, it is a sign that physical and emotional healing is on the way. Have hope, follow your dreams, and your wishes will be granted. This card speaks of inspiration. Your creativity will flow better than ever before. Let it fill you up and see where it leads you. Keywords, healing, inspiration, intuition, renewal, hope, peace, wishes granted, blah, blah, blah. So June, I'm gonna be depressed. July, I'm gonna, I'm gonna come back with creativity out the wazoo. Cool. August. The sun. He's not in position for this tribute. So we've gotten the star and the sun, which the sun is also a star. But anyway. this is one of the most fortuitous cards in the tarot deck. Ooh, August is going to be good. The sun is a card of good omens, good luck, achievement, creativity, and breakthroughs. Dance under the light of the sun and work some solar, solar magic. Success is yours. Expect happier times, good health, energy, and vitality. Spiritual wholeness has been achieved. You will enjoy good times with dear friends, and magical events and celebrations are coming your way. Personal power is at its peak. Focus that charisma and see where it takes you. Things are working in your favor, so hang on tight and enjoy the ride. Keywords, achievement, personal power, good times, happy events, friendship, vitality, joy, enthusiasm, fame, growth, success, happiness. The Plumbre, Nine of Cups. That lady looks peaceful. I don't know, content, almost. 
The Nine of Cups turns up in the reading. Expect that your social expect that your social calendar will be filling up. This is the hospitality card. It also symbolizes welcome and confirms that you will be hosting an event or party for family and friends. If it appears in a reading with the Four of Wands, then expect to be very busy with social plans for the next few months. Oh good, we don't have the Four of Wands yet. Yet. <laughs> so community, hospitality, graciousness, gatherings, festivals, a wish will be granted. Enjoyable celebrations with family, coven, and friends. So... <laughs> the reverse that smugness, false pride, you are not as popular as you think you are. Unfriendliness. Cute. So September. I'm gonna be busy busy, I guess. Sure. October. Six of Wands. This is a victory card, symbolizing achievement, recognition, compliments, success, accomplishments, and well-deserved accolades after hard work. You can overcome any obstacle if you work at it. This card, card can also remind us to hang in there. Times may be tough, but you will get through it and come out victorious if you keep trying. Keywords, victory, achievement, recognition, recognition for a job well done. Cool. That's October. November. <laughs> Another freaking wands. Knight of wands. When the Knight of Wands comes roaring into your life, he brings change, exciting activity, and exhilaration. This is the card of movement. Expect the unexpected. You may find yourself moving to a new job or moving to a new house. God, I hope not. I hate moving. I don't want to get a different job. <sighs> Opportunity for travel may, prevent it, may present itself. In November? The so travel may be for business, as the suit of wands is often related to career and business. This card heralds a time of energy, bold moves, action, and adventure. This court card may also announce that an energetic, fiery, opinionated, and enthusiastic young man with fair hate for fair hip. Oh my god. <laughs> with fair hair and pale eyes is about to enter your life, so be on your toes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Knight of Wands' challenge is to embrace change, have an adventure, and enjoy the journey. All right, November, come at me, bro. Cool. <laughs> Associated elements, fire and fire. <laughs> That's literally what it says. Just fucking fire. Fire is the suit of wands related natural element, while all four of the knights are associated with the energetic element of fire. So just straight up fucking fire. Just fire! Fire! Okay. Cool. Anyway, alright. Now, December. The Nine of Pentacles. She looks sassy. Okay. I think that's the first pentacles we've gotten this whole time. Oh my god, I've gotten one of every freaking thing. That's gotta mean something, right? When the nine of pentacles blooms into your reading, it tells of a time of joy and abundance. This tarot card classically represents a person who is elegant, successful, and happiest when surrounded by beautiful things in nature. Finally, the Nine of Pentacles can represent that financial worries are over and heralds a time of creative focus, confidence, and personal growth. So, uh... Basically, what we have here is... This dude is all about coming up with creative solutions for problems, so it seems like... Based on these cards, I'm going to have a few times of the year where, like, problems are going to happen or, like, stressful things are going to happen. Because I know this one is like, yay, community, lots of events, blah, blah, blah. That sounds stressful as hell to me. So, it seems like every few months, according to these things, something, like, bad or seemingly bad is going to happen. But, like, figuring out a creative solution to the problem will help me continue on or whatever and also some dude i guess fucking although i have heard that in tarot like even if it's represented by a dude on the card like it doesn't have to be somebody who is a man 
like just somebody with a masculine energy or whatever the hell that means. So interesting, very interesting. <laughs> so anyways, it seems like this whole year, this whole thing is kind of just lots of creative, like creativity came up quite a lot. Like, and uh, I'm fully aware that I have no idea what I'm doing and probably completely missed some cool symbolism and stuff. Like I said at the start, if I did, leave it down in the comments. Let me know what I missed, some interesting things you observed, whatever. Just, you know, talk to me. Love to hear it. If you would like to come with me on this wonderful journey that this tarot deck has predicted for me for this year of 2019, then click subscribe. There's a button somewhere for you to click subscribe. Um, there's another one that is for a video that YouTube thinks that you will like. Um, thanks for joining me, and I'll see you later, friends. Bye!